Hello everyone, myself Dr. Suresh, Professor of Biochemistry and in today's video we will be talking about the metabolism of complex lipids. So when you go back to the simple classification of lipids like simple lipids, complex lipids and derived lipids. So in our previous videos we have discussed about the simple lipids metabolism and derived lipids metabolism, cholesterol synthesis, cholesterol degradation, TAG synthesis, TAG degradation. Okay, and polyessential, polyunsaturated fatty acid synthesis, their uses, and how medium chain fatty acids and long chain fatty acids will be metabolized. Right, all these things we have discussed. So now we'll be discussing about how these complex lipids. Complex lipids are of different types: uh, phospholipids, glycolipids, and then these uh, phospholipids again convert to glycerophospholipids, sphingophospholipids, and then glycolipids again of uh, different types: ganglocytes, cerebrocytes and then sulfatides right so lobocytes so all these things are there so we'll start from uh, glycerophospholipids okay how these glycerophospholipids will be synthesized so the main thing for the complex lipids is phosphatidic acid formation so here they are combination like complex lipids are combination of glycerol fatty acid and other than i mean nitrogen substance i mean what to say nitrogen substance it might be nitrogen phosphate or some other uh, sulfur, any other substance it might be. So it is a combination. So that's why it is known as complex. So phosphatidic acid is an important intermediate in synthesis of phosphoglycerate. Phosphatidic acid actually one glycerol and two uh, fatty acids uh, with weight of third uh, carbon of glycerol, where the other uh, substance like uh, nitrogen substance or amino acid or some choline molecule or uh, some carbohydrate phosphate may attach. Okay, so the phosphatidic acid itself may be formed from glycerol 3 phosphate or dihydroxyacetone phosphate. The synthesis of glycerophospholipids can occur either by activation of CDP choline or CDP choline dependent choline or CDP ethanolamine or by formation of active diacyl glycerol or CDP diacyl glycerol. In CDP diacyl glycerol pathway, phosphatidic acid first reacts with CTP to form. CDP diacyl glycerol. CDP here is like CTP, like cytidine diphosphate, cytidine triphosphate. So, like ATP, okay, whatever the nucleotides you take, ATP, GTP, UTP, CTP, right. So, like this here, CDP diacyl glycerol pathway you are talking about. Here, instead of ATP, we are talking about CTP. Okay, so here CTP will come into the action and accepts the diacyl glycerol and forms CDP diacyl glycerol. So the C, uh, CDP diacyl glycerol can react with alcoholic group of serine or inositol to form corresponding phosphoglyceride and releasing CMP. The phosphatidyl inositol undergoes further phosphorylation by specific kinase to form phosphatidyl inositol diphosphate PIP2. Phosphatidyl inositol diphosphate. Two phosphate groups are there which act as a signal transducer or it will be acting as a second messenger inside the cells. Next, phosphatidylcholine. How this phosphatidylcholine will be synthesized? The other name for phosphatidylcholine is lecithin. Okay, the major pathway for lecithin and cephalin synthesis, especially in liver and brain, involves the activation of choline or ethanolamine to phosphorylate derivative and then to form CDP derivative. Finally, phosphatidylcholine or phosphatidylethanolamine is transferred to diacyl glycerol to form corresponding phospholipid. First one fatty acid residue is removed from glycerol then arachidonic acid is added by the action of LLAT. What is LLAT? Lecithin lysolecithin acyl transferase. Lecithin isolecithin acyl transferase. So here now you can see here how the complex lipids are synthesizing one by one especially phospholipids. Choline plus ADP to form phosphocholine and ADP by the enzyme choline kinase. Now this phosphocholine acted by cytidine triphosphate uh, CTP by active action of the enzyme phosphocholine cytidyl transferase which to form CDP choline and phospho inorganic pyrophosphate uh, inorganic pyrophosphate and now 1,2 diacyl glycerol acted on CDP choline to form phosphatidylcholine the first uh, complex lipid to be synthesized by the enzyme ethanolamine phosphotransferase again here the release of CMP. Now ethanolamine which will be acting with ATP by the enzyme ethanolamine kinase to form phosphoethanolamine ADP. Now this phosphoethanolamine combines with CTP to form CDP ethanolamine and uh, inorganic pyrophosphate by the enzyme phosphoethanolamine cytidyl transferase. 1,2 diacyl glycerol again acted I mean added to the CDP ethanolamine 
by the enzyme phosphotransferase to form phosphatidyl ethanol. So here you see phosphatidyl choline and phosphatidyl ethanolamine or the complex lipids which has been synthesized and next to synthesized is phosphatidyl ethanolamine when you add amino acid serine there will be synthesis of phosphatidyl serine and there is a removal of ethanolamine. So ethanolamine serine are interconvertible okay when you are having serine ethanolamine you can convert it to serine phosphatidyl serine by adding amino acid serine. So major phosphatidyl choline, phosphatidyl ethanolamine, phosphatidyl serine have been formed and now to form phosphatidyl inositol. So what other thing has to be required okay. So now here one palmitile two oleal lecithin converted to one palmitile isolecithin where there is involvement of uh, phospholipase A2 uh, and there is a release of folic acid. Now this one palmitile lysolecithin converted to phosphatidyl choline where lecithin will be added and I mean converted to lysolecithin. The enzyme is lecithin lysolecithin acyl transferase and this one palmitile lysolecithin again it can be converted to phosphatidyl choline. There is addition of arachidonic acid where this uh, CoA will be converted into CoASH and again this one palmitile lecithin can be converted into dipalmitile lecithin which is a important uh, substance for as a lung surfactant in alveoli of lungs okay where palmitic acid is added so if arachidonic acid adds it to one palmitile isolecithin it is a phosphatidyl choline if palmitic acid is added then it is dipalmitile lecithin okay if again one more palmitile isolecithin where it will be converted to glutarophosphatidyl choline again to form dipalmitile lecithin so here the important is dipalmitile lecithin which is acting as a lung surfactant which is present in alveol of the lungs which is required for the uh, to prevention of flattering of the lungs during respiration. Next, so plasmalogens, how these plasmalogens will be synthesized? So dihydroxyestone phosphate, what is the uh, dihydroxyestone phosphate it is one of the intermediate of glycolysis where it can be converted back to glycerol H3 phosphate. So dihydroxyestone phosphate is acylated and then choline is added. Okay, finally the alkyl group in the first carbon atom is desaturated. It another important enzyme acting on lecithin is LCAT which transfers UFA from second carbon of glycerol to cholesterol forming lysolecithin and cholesterol ester. So lysolecithin choline acyl transferase. Now spingolipids, they are important component of bimembranes as well as the brain. The most important phosphospingolipid is spingomyelin. Ceramide is a basic structural unit of all spingolipids. Uh, next, synthesis of ceramide. It is formed from spingosine and fatty acyl CoA. Spingosine is formed in the endoplasmic reticulum from palmitel CoA and serine in the presence of pyridoxal phosphate. So you see here palmitel CoA to form 3 keto dihydrospingosine where serine is involved and there is removal of carbon dioxide by the involvement of PLP. And alpha keto dihydrospingosine converted to dihydrospingosamine where NADPH involvement is there. And again this dihydrospingosine by adding fatty acyl CoA converted to dihydroxyceramide, dihydroceramide and coenzyme A and dihydroceramide finally converted to ceramide by removing two hydrogens from dihydroceramide where this removed hydrogens are accepted by FAD to form FADH2. Next, so like various spingomyelins like ceramide which can react with CDP choline to give rise to spingomyelin okay and the CDP which is removed as CMP that is cited in monophosphate. Ceramide reacts with uh, CDP choline to form spingomyelin. In case of Newman Pick's disease, there is an inborn error in metabolism due to failure of degradation of spingomyelin. So, yes, uh, we don't have any problem in synthesis of spingomyelin, but the thing is, every substance which is synthesizing in our body has to be degraded. So, if there is defect in the degradation, what happens? They keep on accumulating the spaces inside the cell and they what they do, they causing some disorder condition. So, in such condition, if there is any uh, defect in degradation of spingomyelins, okay, the accumulation of spingomyelins in the cells cause Neiman Pick's disease. The enzyme deficient is spingomyelinase. So, this enzyme degrades the spingomyelin. So, the spingomyelinase deficiency causes Neiman Pick's disease. Now, synthesis of glycospingolipids. So, these are carbohydrate containing lipids, their combination glycospingolipids like carbohydrate and lipid. Okay, so these carbohydrate containing lipids are synthesized by transfer of active glycosyl or hexosamine residue from UDP derivative. So in previous phospholipids, we have seen the involvement of CTP and ATP. Okay, and now here we are seeing the involvement of UDP derivatives, uridine diphosphate. So cerebrocytes, the two most common cerebrocytes are glucocerebrocytes and galactocerebrocytes. You can make out here with the name. So in these cerebrocytes, the major carbohydrate is glucose. In galactocerebrocytes, the major carbohydrate is galactose. So 
the diseases attached with this is gaucher's disease it is also like uh, newman pick disease is also inborn error okay due to failure of degradation of glucose erythrocytes in newman pick's disease pingomyelin accumulation is there in case of gaucher's disease there is accumulation of glucose erythrocytes the enzyme beta glucosidase is deficient in this condition where glucose cerebrocytes cannot be degraded synthesis of cerebrocytes so cerebrocytes like what are like cerebrocyte sulfatides or sulfuric acid esters of cerebro because here we have seen carbohydrate lipids but along with the carbohydrate lipids there is attachment of sulfate group so that's why they are known as sulfatides the major sulfolipid of brain is galactocerebrocyte 3 sulfate paps what is paps phosphoadenosyl phosphosulfate is a active sulfur donor in our body is a phosphoadenosine phosphosulfate or active sulfate formed from sulfur containing amino acid so when you see the synthesis of cerebrocytes ceramide the involvement of udp galactose so udp is a donating the galactose to ceramide to form galactocerebrocyte and to form a free udp and again ceramide and udp glucose glucosyl transferase to form glucocerebrocyte galactocerebrocyte plus paps here the addition of phosphate group to form sulfatides that means galactocerebrocyte 3 sulfate and pap phosphoadenosyl phosphate because sulfur group has been given to the galactocerebrocyte synthesis of ganglocytes so ganglocytes contain one or more sialic acid residues okay that means uh, heteropolysaccharide subunits they are present in high concentration in central nervous system and also in surface of membranes for ganglocyte synthesis the active form of nano nano means N-acetyl nuraminic acid which you can see extensively in uh, heteropolysaccharides carbohydrates and here like uh, uh, sphingomyelin deficiencies and uh, cerebrocyte deficiency I mean like uh, enzyme deficiencies like uh, Newman Pick's disease, Gaucher's disease. In Newman Pick disease what the enzyme deficiency is sphingomyelin is. In case of Gaucher's disease the enzyme deficiency is glucose cerebrosidase. So here the enzyme deficiency in case of Tay-Sachs disease uh, is hexosaminidose A where it is enabled in uh, degradation of ganglocytes. So these ganglocytes will be accumulated in central nervous system and causing problem. So here ganglocyte you see ceramide, glucose, galactose plus CMP nano, non acetyl neuraminic acid which converted to free CMP and ceramide, glucose, galactose, nano which giving to a ganglocyte M3. So where UDP, n uh, galactose amine which donating its n galactose amine to form ceramide, glucose, galactose, nano and GM2 this is. So finally there is attachment of n galactose amine attached to the ceramide, glucose, galactose, nano. So that's all about synthesis of complex lipids and uh, associated disorders. Thanks for watching. Thank you.